Ooh, it's getting a little sensual with the mic. So, before the start of our Rage Quit episode, I would like to tell a little bit about uh, Rage Quit's sponsor. So, welcome to another episode of Rage Quit, the husband and wife duo that discusses video games every week. Rage Quit is sponsored by AFK Clothing Co. Are you a gamer? Do you enjoy games? Then check out AFK Clothing Co. for all of your gaming apparel needs. As I record this, I am sporting an AFK green sleeve baseball tee that I absolutely love and wear every week. We'd never be sponsored by something we didn't like. And if you'd like to support the show, head on over to AFK Clothing Co., link in the description below, and type ASI in the promo code box to get 10% off your next order. As always, just follow the bear, and now on to the show. Not a sad bam 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 bam. Sad bam 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 bam. It's a sad bam bam bam. Overdramatization. That was not the word. Dramatization. There you go. Overdramatization. I like overdramatization. That's like that's one of your better for it, man. Too. It's so long. <laughs> that's what she said. Oh. <laughs> well, well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Rage Quit. <laughs> I bet I'm going to lose, like, an eardrum when I'm recording, or not recording, <laughs> but uh, producing it, listening yeah. through, I forget about it. God, yeah, my ears! It's like a week from now, I'm like, ow, crap, <laughs> why did I drop the chair? I have headphones on. <laughs> I didn't think this one through. <laughs> this is a funny game. <laughs> the joke went too far. The joke went too far. Freaking Jelini, go away. You like it has like the little dust poop. You, you wouldn't your... get it. That's what I should have done right after I did the thing. So then I'm listening to it. Oh, I took the joke too far. You wouldn't get it. <laughs> oh. Trish, are you okay? Oh, oh god, <laughs> difficulties in two. I got you get away from your mother to climb to the fence. And I'll go line of dust. Yeah, the line of dust from the chairs. I'll pitch out. That's great. <laughs> well, I mean, the cat shit on it. That did not help. You smoke on them, you know. All these things. All these things. Skin dust. Anyways, this is a podcast about video games. <laughs> <laughs> and knocking over chairs. <laughs> <laughs> yep, just the rage. And to the rage quit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I didn't have a table, so. We don't have oh, a formal God. dining room, so I had to get away with chairs instead. <laughs> it's not even a chair, it's a stool. <laughs> Stools are chairs. Stools are not not chairs. all chairs are stools. Oh <laughs> 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 uh, anyways, you're dark. Uh, this is Rage Quit's Final Fantasy episode. Yeah, episode 20 of Rage Quit. Yeah. We did it, guys. We're done. What? Yeah, we're done. <laughs> done to retire. There's 20 episodes. Yeah, done to retire. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> well, I'm Ariel Schultz, if you haven't known this by now. I'm Anthony Schultz. Wait, what? No, I know. <laughs> yeah, and today we're going to do a deep dive into Final Fantasy. We did a similar podcast uh, about Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed. So I'm sure that this episode will follow similarly, and then there will be other episodes in the future that do the same kind of thing. Cover a franchise. Franchise episodes, uh, games we particularly like, games that have like crazy meaning and weird ass length of just being around. Like, yeah, this one might run a little more than an hour depending on how in depth of the conversation we go, just true. because it's so, <laughs> it's so long. <laughs> that's what she said. Oh, there's so much Final Fantasy. Mm, that's also what she said. <laughs> Dumb ass. Works on both, both, uh, shifts. It does. Yep. Double entendre. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Well, do we have any? We don't have any housekeeping per se. I think we're pretty much all caught up. So I mean, we're still sponsored by AFK Clothing Co. Mm-hmm. So that's our sponsor for Rage Quit. Yep. Go check them out. Um, probably already heard at the beginning of this episode. I have mm-hmm. a small kind of advert in the beginning. Um, but mm-hmm. I just like to reiterate. Um, yeah, go check them out. They have awesome like gaming apparel and mm-hmm. like. Uh, coffee mugs and beanies and sweatshirts and you can get uh, 50% off if you type in ASI into the promo code These are just like box. a simple one, just ASI. Yeah, just ASI. I mean, I'm trying to make it easy. I didn't want to do like, you know, like Rage Quit something, AS Inquisitor, or like... The greatest AS Inquisitor. Ever. Yeah, I just wanted to keep it like simple, so the promo code I picked was ASI. But yeah, you can get 15% off at any time by throwing that in there. So. Yeah. And it helps support the, sp- uh, the podcast too. True. So, yes, it so. does. We appreciate it. And then, yeah, our podcast is available everywhere. Everywhere you go. Yeah, all the main outlets. So we got Google Play Music, mm-hmm. 
Spotify, mm. iTunes, Castbox, of course, mm. YouTube. So YouTube. we'll probably be expanding into like Stitcher and some of the other like main podcasting ones. Anchor, we do. We're just talking about earlier today. Yep. Which will be that'd be cool. And I like how we're on every uh, range, pretty much almost every range of you YouTube. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like podcast services, podcast pretty services much. Services yeah. So too. we're trying to make it so it's as far and wide as possible, so you don't. If you really want to listen to us, mm-hmm. uh, you don't have to go to something you don't use. Yeah. Like, if you're a, po- a regular podcast listener of, like, a whole bunch of different podcasts, whatever app you're using, we want to be on that. Exactly. And it's always nice, too, to be on YouTube as well, because you just pop that thing on in the background, or by your TV, or your computer, or whatever you're doing, and you just meander around doing stuff, listening to us. Yeah, and if you're listening to it on YouTube, mm-hmm. uh, it does come out two days later, so you can, can get it two days early if you listen to just the podcast thing. True. Although, if you prefer to listen to it on YouTube, like it's a little, it'll little, be there. It'll be there. It just takes a little bit longer for me to produce that, because mm-hmm. I do that separately, and I submit it myself, and so essentially I'm doing like two editions yeah. of the same, every episode. I have to do two different versions. So one is for podcast services, and then one's strictly for YouTube. Yeah. It's obviously a video format or service, so. Still. Anyways, we'll eventually get going up uh, recording ourselves once we get our studio going, too. So keep that in mind. We'll eventually have a video along with that. Yeah, we tried it, uh, like, once before, uh, and we just didn't quite have, like, the adequate setup to do it. No, I just turned it turned off janky as shit. <laughs> yeah. It was like we were either sacrificing, like, audio for just one format, YouTube mm-hmm. in this case, or we weren't going to have video so we could be on all podcast services. Mm-hmm. This yeah. is a podcast, though. It's not, like, a variety show or something on YouTube. No. So yeah. that's why we just focus more on audio, and then, like Ariel said, once we have our, like, studio space, like, up and running, and then just a little bit more equipment, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll be good to go, and then we'll have quality on both fronts. We'll, yeah. we'll have good video, and we'll have good audio, so... Look forward to that in the future as well. That'll happen for sure this year. So Yes, it, it, it's sometime soon. Obviously, it's January right now. I was going to wait till spring, summertime. So about April, May-ish, we'll start trying to get it going. Yeah, I'd say by the end of the summer. Mm-hmm. Like latest. Latest, yeah. It's like we'll, we'll start being able to produce these podcasts mm-hmm. uh, with a video component. Which will be legit. Yeah, it'll be really cool. I'm excited for that as mm-hmm. well. So. Keep an eye out for that. That's a good good thing to bring up for housekeeping. Yeah. And we'll continue to reiterate and keep everybody kind of in the loop for, like, our progress on that. Yes, of course. Like, if we're getting closer to <laughs> we it. We can't clean up the shed first. <laughs> we do, yeah. Get power ran to it. All that can't be too bad. But nah. But, but it will be a little bit of work for sure. That's just the nitty gritty on what that's got to do. But, anyway, so, tell me, Cancer, why are we talking about the Final Fantasies? So, Final Fantasy for me is, like... One of, if not the, like, most, my most favorite franchises. Exactly. I know for a lot of people, like, it's waned, especially in recent years. Mm-hmm. And I've always heard, you know, be be critical of the things you love. So I see that as well. Yeah. Like, uh, but for me, like, growing up and playing video games, they were some mm-hmm. of the earliest ones I ever played. And I got to grow up kind of in the, like, the golden age of, like, Final, Final Fantasy. Fantasy. Yeah. Um, so the first one I ever played was Final Fantasy VII, mm-hmm. which everyone, like, adores. You know, they're remaking it now, which is legit. Yeah, and everyone's super excited about that as well, and there's a lot of buzz about it. But I got to play, like, seven, eight, and 9, like, PS1 era, mm-hmm. and then Final Fantasy, like, 10, 10, 2, and 12, you know, as they released. Yeah. Uh, as they came out. So it really defined my love for, like, RPGs and, mm-hmm. the, like, the elements that those, that genre has in it and why I still like RPGs to mm-hmm. this day. I just do a really good job of, uh, for better or worse, just kind of, like, being that Japanese RPG that, like, gets Western audiences excited, which can be kind of hard, because JRPGs can be very kind of niche, but Final Fantasy has done a good job of just being around. I just just realized what JRPGs meant, Japanese RPGs. Oh, Japanese role-playing games, yeah. I feel like such an idiot. I just honestly like that this moment you said, I'm like, Oh, that's what it means. Yeah, because they don't say, for whatever reason, like, WRPGs for Western RPGs, but the people will say Western RPGs mm-hmm. along the lines of, like, The Outer Worlds, Fallout, yeah. Mass Effect, uh, things like that would be uh, Elder Scrolls, especially. Mm-hmm. That kind of open-world-style RPG mm-hmm. is very indicative of, like, 
what Western. what the West has brought yeah. into the RPG scene, which we were pretty late on game development wise. Yeah. We had some, but the hack lather. Uh, the Japanese have always done mm-hmm. some great like series, including Final Fantasy. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> I just feel RPGs. like an idiot that I just realized that what it, that's what it means, JRPGs. I honestly just thought it was just genre-wise, not yeah, realizing yeah. it. Well, when I was a kid, I didn't really think of Final Fantasy as a Japanese role-playing game. I didn't think of it that way. What did you think of it as? Well, because I was playing it here as an American, mm-hmm. and I was getting it for my PS1, and I knew Sony was in Japan, mm-hmm. and I was playing it on you know, a Japanese machine, Yeah, but it didn't have that... Uh, kind of anime flair Not in the really. PS1 it days. It wasn't like always over the top anime, which they can be. Like for some there wasn't even like anime cutscenes or anything. It was they tried to be like realistic with the three D technology that mm-hmm. they had and the hardware that they had. So in my head, it was always just an RPG. I didn't even think of it as a a, a Japanese. Like, what do you think that kind of like? This is off tangent. What we're talking about, like with like Persona, comparatively to Final Fantasy. Well, and and that's funny that you bring that up because when I was that age, like playing Final Fantasy VII and stuff, mm-hmm. like I didn't like anime, anime at mm-hmm. all. I didn't like manga. I didn't like anime. I didn't like that art style. That's mm-hmm. what bothered me the most. Yeah. So I was like unwilling. Oh, really big eyeballs and big tits. Yeah, I was just like, ah, it it just seems so kind of hackneyed, mm-hmm. in my opinion. That I was just like, I, I couldn't get over the art style in my head to be able to even like enjoy or play mm-hmm. any of those games that were like that then. And so I just didn't. Yeah. And so now as an adult, I'm like a little bit more open minded about stuff like that. I'm so sure. I'm I can sure. get over the art style mm-hmm. and like, or find some sort of appreciation in it and play games like yeah. Persona or Yeast and stuff like that, which are very distinctly Japanese. Japanese. Yeah. But uh, I would not have been able to do that when. You know, Final Fantasy, when I played Final Fantasy 7 or 8 or 9 in that generation. But that makes me think, though, with the development of Final Fantasy, because we just, we didn't change too much of it. It's just basically the dubbed English version. Yeah. What do you think they, like, is it because they knew Americans were like that? That's why they made it more Americanized, if you think about it? I don't know. There, there <coughs> were, like, different versions. I mean, there were, there wasn't, there wasn't different versions of Final Fantasy when they yeah. were originally coming out. Mm-hmm. So, like, like the numbering system for them in particular is kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. <coughs> so, I'm talking about like style art, style, stylistic. But you're talking about like, because like, like you said, you didn't really like over the top anime ish, and a lot of Japanese games are anime, obviously. I mean, I, I guess I would have to say that it was purposeful to some degree, but it wasn't like we had a difference in art style between mm-hmm. the Japanese releases and the American ones or the North American releases. Mm-hmm. So I think that was probably just kind of the vision of the, the series. The Final Fantasy like, creator. Yeah. And it just kind of remained that way. Okay. Because, like, you look at um, Dragon Quest mm-hmm. or, or Dragon Warrior, which is what it was known here, on the NES for the first couple outings, mm-hmm. first three, I think. Um, I mean, again, a Japanese role playing game, but because it was like sprite based it, and it didn't have like anime cutscenes or anything like yeah. that, you could really tell. But when it got into like the series proper years mm-hmm. later, then it was very like anime, anime. kind of styled yeah. and stuff, and they, and they still are. Uh, like Dragon Quest Eleven uh, came out not too long ago and has done mm-hmm. really well. <clears throat> And so that kind of leaned into the the more anime stylings mm-hmm. of it, and Final Fantasy just never really did. I mean, okay. it had some kind of motifs, but yeah, not yeah. really in the artwork or the design hmm. so much. But I feel like maybe they strive for realism. Yeah, to a degree. To Obviously, a degree, it's a fantasy, fantasy game, but I mean, like, as far as how it looked, I think they tried for realism, more realistic, just in general. Mm-hmm. So that way, it would you know appeal Throwing. to North American audiences, but probably. But I think I might be an outlier in this because, like, growing up, everyone was really hot for, like, Pokemon and, like, um, Yu-Gi-Oh! And, like, they watched a lot of anime and stuff. I, I, I just didn't. Like, You're the one weirdo that doesn't follow. Yeah, it was just kind of like, it just didn't grab me, so that's why I never got into Pokemon. That's why mm. I never got into these, like, I hugely like popular Pokemon things when we were kids. Cute and stuff you would lean on. It's not and I really like Pokemon now. I've played... Pokemon Red at your behest is one of the best RPGs I've played. I told you it's just great, yeah. 
and, and it is fun. It is like an addictive kind of gameplay loop. Mm-hmm. So I can see why, and I like card games too. So it's like I can see why people were interested mm-hmm. in. And then as a kid, you got a cartoon on top of it. Exactly. So yeah, kids, I get kids. the allure as an adult. Just as a kid, I was. You're a just weirdo. not very into anime, <laughs> so I just kind of brushed it off and moved on. You're just a weirdo. Yeah. That's okay. We love you still. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Aww. Dante loves you. That's about it. <laughs> yeah. And Tashi. <laughs> yeah, your cat, your I got my cats. <laughs> Yo, yeah. Your freaking four cats. And your dog. And one of my cats is named after a Pokemon. His name is Psyduck. <laughs> that was because of her song. Yeah. That's he didn't. True. He said it like the movie. To yeah. make the Pikachu. Psyduck. Psyduck. <laughs> All snotty. That was the best. Oh, that's good. Good stuff. Good stuff. But anyways... So that's why I was just curious because obviously like I see Final Fantasy and when I actually look at it like you I'm like I don't see it as a JRPG it is but I just yeah the, you the, know the it is the latter half honestly is more JRPG than the beginning oh yeah I agree because like the first six are like mm-hmm. sprite based so it's just really hard to tell one way or the other what it is art wise yeah sprite to sprite and then you get seven eight nine so it's like three D but very they have like the hand painted yeah. backgrounds so they tried to be as realistic as possible so they're kind of blocky and you yeah. know you get the tip is pointed tips like, and yeah. stuff like that and block, block hands yep. and stuff and then ten ten two and twelve were as the standalone ones at least were. Mm you know, a little bit better, like, 3D-wise, but, again, they seem to strive for Still realism. Still square tits and block hands, but... Not too bad, because we were playing 10. Yeah, and no, it's not over the top. And, like, the funny part is, it's, like, like, I was still saying, it's, like, I don't see JRPGs, but, like, when you play Final Fantasy fifteen, I'm like, oh... You see it a little it bit is. more, yeah. There it is, you know. Or, like, you know, playing Yeast 8, which mm-hmm. is what I just finished up. Yep. Very anime. Yeah, like, yeah. And, you know, an action RPG, but still an action JRPG. Mm-hmm. Like, you can, you can definitely see it. It's like, weird how they have, they have that kind of weird combination between, like, the JRPGs that, obviously they are JRPGs, but, like, the heavily anime ones compared to the non-very heavily anime ones. It's just yeah. kind of a weird split in the games, even though they're all the Final Fantasies. Yeah, and there was definitely a big slump like, until recently, as far mm-hmm. as just Japanese RPGs in general. Yeah. There really... I mean, there there was good ones. Like, it would be wrong of me to say that there wasn't mm-hmm. during that period. But, like, when I was younger, like, PS1, mm-hmm. and then prior, even, like, NES and Super Nintendo and stuff like that, that though that spread of j- mm-hmm. console generations had really good JRPGs. And yeah. It was a very prevalent, like, genre. A lot of people played them, and they critically did very well. They sold very well. Mm-hmm. And then there was the longest time where there just wasn't. Yeah. Like, Final Fantasy even slumped in there. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, some other ones, like, remained dormant. Mm-hmm. And they, we just didn't have new ones. And then I'd say, like, late PS3 kind of generation, we got, like, Nino Kuni. Yeah. And then Yeast finally started to take off. Uh, which has also been around as long as Final Fantasy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But they started to do remasters of those. Mm -hmm. The Vita kind of helped that out. And then now you were getting a lot of different kind of... It's like the Western RPGs kind of like blew up in that in-between, like PS2 to PS3 era. Mm -hmm. And so they kind of overshadowed all the JRPGs. And now JRPGs are starting to come back and Western RPGs are kind of like kind of fading off a little bit like we haven't gotten a great like um mm-hmm. dragon age yeah we haven't gotten a great like new mass effect there mm-hmm. hasn't been a new elder scrolls in a long time there hasn't been are they releasing new elder scrolls they there's a tease of elder scrolls 6 but like no timetable oh skyrim's just on everything but that came out in 2011 <laughs> so it's been nine years <laughs> since there's been a, there was a proper because yeah, it was i think 11 11 11 is when they released it. yeah yeah that that whole spiel I don't know that. but yeah, it's been nine years to this point, and we don't mm. really have a date for, like, Elder Scrolls 6. Cause, cause it's, in, it's in progress for Westernization, the final Elder Scrolls, but Final Fantasy, like you said. Fallout 4 in the in-between time. Yeah, the JRPGs are definitely... But like, now those are kind of coming back. Yeah, the JRPGs. It's always kind of like a fluctuating and switch, and which makes sense back and forth what's popular, what's not. Yeah. What's coming back in style, what's going out of style, and it's always that big circle of video game life. Yeah, because I see a lot more stuff now about, like, Persona 5, mm. Yeast again, uh, tra- five Trails of Cold Steel is another franchise. before Fallout 76, and then it's like they're re-releasing it and making a, it a big spiel again. Yeah, Persona even 5 Even though Royal. it's already been out. Yeah, well, because it released on, it was like, 
I think it was cross platform between PS3 and PS4, mm-hmm. so it could play on both. Now it's like just and Persona PS4. does Persona that franchise in particular does that. They mm-hmm. do like a like standard edition, and then uh, like a few years later mm-hmm. they'll do like a definitive cut. Yeah, for of like that PlayStation game. Four. Because like the first Persona I played was Persona Four Golden. Yeah, which was the definitive cut. Oh, PS3 on the it was on the Vita. Oh Vita, this is how I played it. I don't know what the original mm-hmm. platform was. Uh, PS3, or Persona 3, sorry, had the same oh, thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was thinking P3. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Persona 3 had a, like, definitive cut on the PSP mm-hmm. before then, and so now we're getting uh, Persona 5 Royal, which is going to be, like, the definitive it's cut the for the PS4. So, they've been pretty good about doing that. Yeast is going through a similar thing where they're remastering mm-hmm. their old titles. They're like reimagining them and then like upping the the gameplay and the yeah the you know fastidiousness of it and stuff like that. It's like with the remastered seven Final Fantasy seven is like the biggest example now, especially where they have it where you can play the old version and their new version, which is weird because it's a remaster. Yeah, it's, it is re it is going to be reimagined. Like it's not going to be beat for beat, scene for scene, the same. No, it's completely different, which is crazy. You honestly, at that point, just could just release a new game. Well, but... they, they are. I mean, they're just doing it in episodes because oh, supposedly yeah. it's so huge. Well, yeah, I mean, they're yeah, they're, they're doing... making it where you can play like the original Final Fantasy VII and then the, their version of the remaster and. Because I think scenes and everything. the first episode of Final Fantasy VII Remake is two Blu-ray discs, I think. <laughs> That's insane in its own right. It might just be one. Straight like, up brings back the old school couple disc games from yeah. the PlayStation 1 and 2 era. And... Well, Final Fantasy thirteen on the Xbox mm-hmm. was multiple discs. That's crazy. Yeah, it wasn't on the PS4 because it was a Blu-ray. Mm-hmm. So it didn't need to be. It could hold more data yeah. than what uh, the 360 mm-hmm. was running. But the Xbox 360, if you played Final Fantasy 13 on there, mm-hmm. uh, was like two or three discs. I think it was three. That's insane. Yeah, it, which is kind of like, to me, as a PlayStation uh, like That's just fan like and amazing. player, You're like, oh, we I haven't that. had that I since that. the PS1. <laughs> like There really hasn't been multiple discs. So, I've heard that, like, Red Dead Redemption is on the PS4, and, like, Last of Us Part Two yeah. will be as well, but, um, yeah, I, I really haven't personally, like, experienced that since mm-hmm. the PS1, where I was playing RPGs like Final Fantasy 7, 8, 9, they were mm-hmm. just multiple discs, Legend of Dragoon, multiple discs, like, they just were, yeah. yeah. No, and it's just insane to see how they're bringing it back, not necessarily, they're doing it more along the lines of episodic, which makes sense, but disc-wise, too. They're, like, it, it, it's episodic, they're like, disc one, disc two, disc three, instead of Pretty episode much, one, episode two, yeah. Episode three. And I'm sure they will be, like, a complete collection after all is said and done. Yeah, would you get a complete, like, disc collection? Like, is as, it like as big of a Final Fantasy fan as I am, Nerd. I would... <laughs> Nerd alert! Like, hashtag... <laughs> 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 Where did you get the sparkler? <laughs> like out of your cleavage, just like ha ha. I'm gonna hide sparklers in there now. I'm gonna glitter in my pocket. <laughs> you can do that for so many things, know, dude. Right? Like, that'd be good for your work. <laughs> you gotta go so Woohoo! There's so many. Every day is a celebration. <laughs> I did have a friend say that when he was younger, he used to carry a glitter, the cannon glitter cannon, yeah. and shoot them in people's cars. Oh, that's funny. And then drive off. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> like, super dangerous, but funny. <laughs> well, yeah, we did it at red light, so there would be stop. Yeah, you're not driving. <laughs> that's what I mentioned at first. No, like, no, no, no. I knew what you meant, though. <laughs> no, he stopped at red lights, and if their window was down, and he felt like... Man, you like, on the freeway. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody pulls up next to you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, back to the video games. <laughs> but yeah, I would totally buy um, <laughs> as they came out and released, like, uh, you know, would a la carte. Like... And then I would do, like, to, like if there was a big... It's Final Fantasy, so they probably will be. <laughs> and there was some big, like, okay, here's all the episodes that they've done for mm. Final Fantasy VII Remake, plus, here's you know, a... here's a cloud statue, an art book, yeah, and, yeah. like, a making of thing. I would totally get, like, the, the complete package at the end, too. It's one of the few franchises where I would probably go all out. You do have a handful you do for uh, Fallout. Fallout's one. one. Final Fantasy. Oh, there's another one. Assassin's Creed, if God I can. God of War. God of War's another one, yeah. Yeah. Because obviously we have all the... Devil May Cry. Devil May Cry. We That's another one. Damn. Hey. 
Yeah. But it looks so lame, though. But after playing the game, you're like, okay, the man's actually pretty cool. Like oh, and Devil Cray, yeah. Or whatever. Yeah, Nico's Cameron. van. Yeah. yeah. The Weaponsmith. Yeah. It looks pretty cool. And, they're, and usually in those kind of in-between franchises, like when they do um, collector's editions like mm-hmm. that, and it's like, oh, you know, take a look at them ahead of time. Yeah. And there have been a, a couple times where I'm like, man, I don't know that character. And then you play the game. You're and you're like, like oh, that was that. awesome. I should have got the collector's edition, but I didn't know. Yeah. One of the few that we got. Yeah, Nico's good, but she's not very well known. No, because she's, she's like the story. granddaughter of. The Smith for Ebony and Ivory. Yeah, for Dante. Which but is for Dante, more well though. known. Yeah, that's more well known. And like she, Ebony and Ivory are more well known than the Weapon Smith. <laughs> yeah, I know. Who right. made them for Dante, because like Dante made them famous. Well, then, then, then do it too where Ebony and Ivory is like. Kind of working really out in the weeds now. Um, where it's like, uh, Nico's, like, grandfather was a horrible man, and she's trying to do right by it, and it's like, okay. Yeah. Even though he made, like, Ebony the most Murphy. awesome, like, pistols for Dante that are super iconic, and have been my, like, whole franchise. But. True. <clears throat> Anyways, but no, still, it's just curious to see how that's going to be released for the remake. I'm sure, like, Square Enix will squeeze every penny out of it. Oh, I, yeah. I think they know the fanfare for Final Fantasy like, Seven. The only thing that could really handicap themselves is if they just kind of postpone it indefinitely, mm-hmm. or like the second episode takes ten years to come out or something. Oh yeah, then they're gonna shoot. That'll the kick fans it. in the teeth, and they'll be just pissed off and not want to fucking it, buy it. Not want to like, it. Even with, of their, with their love of Final Fantasy VII in particular. It would like, be the worst part too is if you're doing the episodic release of Final Fantasy VII and and then have Final Fantasy XVI tossed in there. Yeah, I wonder how that's gonna work. Like, that's I, just I don't like know a, how. Japanese studios are structured. True. That's, we we that's have a lot different. of information about like Western studios if they have like multiple teams mm-hmm. or if they have a round of layoffs. It's like a lot of these companies mm-hmm. are like publicly traded. Yeah. Or uh, Western journalists are just like all over it, mm-hmm. like entertainment journalists. Um, I just don't. I don't get a lot of information. I know a lot of people don't get a lot of like intimate information about mm-hmm. like Japanese companies and studios if they have multiple teams or even if they function that way. Yeah. Maybe they do it completely differently just Probably. because of their business practices. So yeah, it's hard to say what they're working on simultaneously. Mm-hmm. You know the publisher for sure. It's mm-hmm. Square Enix, but uh, you don't know what team's working on what, mm-hmm. who's working on what, if they have high profile names attached. If they'll do something like that, where it's like Final Fantasy Seven remake episode one, and then like a couple years later it's Final Fantasy sixteen, and then a couple years later it's Final, Final Fantasy, Fantasy Seven remake, remake episode two. two. Like, I mean, that's one way they can maybe get away with like, to the, stretch it out. To stretch it out if it's gonna be like take a long period of time at least to get the second episode running. I'd be fine with that. Yeah, if there was a Final Fantasy, and even though they were different, in, like in the numbered entries or remake, like a filler. I then that would bother me. Like, that's why I liked how Bethesda was doing it with Elder Scrolls and Fallout, because mm-hmm. it was, like, for a little while there, you got, like, you get an Elder Scrolls game. You get, like, Oblivion. And, yep. then, and then you would get Fallout 3. Yep. And then you would get Skyrim. And then you'd get Fallout 4. Yep. And then they had worked in, like, New Vegas in there. And it was, like, it was kind of cool, because it was, like, okay, I'm going to get this hard fantasy RPG. Mm-hmm. Now I'm going to get this, like, mm-hmm. post-apocalyptic RPG. Mm-hmm. And then they would, and but there's the gameplay wise are pretty much the same. True. And then they just kind of cycled back and forth where it was like, oh, I don't have to wait six years or whatever, four years for I'm only waiting the next Elder years, Scrolls. Yeah. I'm only waiting two. Yeah. And I'm getting you know next fall. Then I'm waiting two more. and I'm getting the next Elder Scrolls. Like, yeah. That was they haven't done that in a while, but no. And I'm uh, just saying that'd be a. I liked that way. kind of turn of the wheel. I was yeah. like, I, as a as a fan and a consumer and a gamer, like that's I'm down with that. It's either if they're not gonna be able to bust it out right away, like in a reasonable amount of time, a year or so or something like that for the episodes. That's how it needs to be done because you're like you said, you're just gonna kick fans in the teeth. They're gonna be like, what the fuck? I'm waiting forever. And Square Enix unfortunately has a, like a bad reputation until recently of taking forever to produce like Game. Final Fantasy 15. Mm-hmm. And, for example, and... What uh, was it, the other one? Guardians. Guardians. The Last Guardian. The Last Guardian was another one. I, that, I, remember, I don't know. That wasn't by Square Enix, but it seems No, thing. but it's something like that where it's like... Well, it was like 10 years. So. Yeah, because I remember when it was... Because there was like Eco, there was like Shadow of the Colossus, mm-hmm. which came out on the PS2. Yeah. And then The Last, Last Guardian came out on the PS4 just a couple years ago. And it was announced to be released on the PS2, I think. PS2 or PS3. Yeah, I... Because I think the first two in that, like, trilogy mm-hmm. were on the PS2. That's what I mean. And then it took another, like, almost full, like, almost, 
uh, half a generation, a full generation, another half generation to just get the sequel it. out. Yeah. Yeah. And because I think Last Guardian and Final Fantasy XV released within like a couple weeks of each other. Yeah, and obviously everyone already was burnt by the Last Guardian. They were like, mm, didn't fucking even it didn't sell it very well. They just kind of shoved it out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Supposedly it's like it's good, but it just we even it, scooped it up. And I've been telling you about I want to play that game. Yeah, and I really like. I remember I watched uh, John, my co-host for FTG, like he played through mm-hmm. Shadow of the Colossus like right after it came out mm-hmm. on the PS2. Yeah. We were in high school at the time, so like I went over to his place. Mm-hmm. I don't know, like after school, like during lunch or something like that, and I uh, got to see it. I was like, "Oh, this is fucking badass!" Yeah. Like, and I played um, Ico, mm-hmm. like back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it just took so long. <laughs> like, and Shadow of the Colossus holds up as you know a masterpiece. Well, that's what I mean. That's why it's insane. So let's talk about uh, the insane reasoning and numbering behind the numbering for Final Fantasy, at least in the Western area era, anyways. Yeah, so yeah, we'll dive into the history of Final Fantasy a little bit here. Um, so the very first Final Fantasy was developed and published by Square mm-hmm. in 1987. Is when it released. <laughs> you're, you're born. Yeah, so definitely kind of shows the agedness of the franchise. Mm-hmm. This is before. Also, Squaresoft and then Enix joined. So there's oh, an yeah. era of Final Fantasy games that are distinctly square. Mm-hmm. And then there's an era that we currently live in where it's more um, Square Enix. Or Enix is mm-hmm. more at the helm Been of this square, yeah. uh, series. Uh, most famously, uh, Square was about to go under. Mm-hmm. They named it Final Fantasy because it was going to be their final game. Mm-hmm. If they didn't make a return on it or make enough money to make the next one, uh, it was going to be their final game. So for them, they called it Final Fantasy because it was their final game. Yeah, and that just fucking and it blew up. Yeah, into this huge ass thing. Obviously, fucking Final Fantasy fifteen. Obviously. Yeah, and then all the offshoots and uh, everything else. Yep. Uh, those are just like main canon kind of stuff. So yeah, it was kind of weird. They released Final Fantasy one in Japan. Mm-hmm. As well as uh, North America. Mm-hmm. Roughly the same game. Mm-hmm. So you get Final Fantasy 1, both territories, like, good. You think from there, they it would just, they would release. Like, it two, did well three, here, too. Yeah. It did well there. That it would just kind of continue on that course. You get Final Fantasy 2 mm-hmm. or 3, you know. Maybe a little bit of a delay since it's coming from Japan. That still happens to this day. Mm-hmm. But no, that's not what happened. <laughs> <laughs> So, Final Fantasy 2, 3, and 5 were only released in Japan at launch. Mm-hmm. So, th- meaning, this resulted in Final Fantasy 1 retaining the same name in both territories, like I just said. However, there was an easy version of Final Fantasy 4, mm-hmm. which was released in the United States, as Final Fantasy 2, because <laughs> it was the second one released here, even oh, though it was no. the fourth one overall. Mm-hmm. So, they just called it Final Fantasy 2, and it was like... Japanese, uh, like, gaming companies, especially at the time, thought Americans were dumb. And so they made easy versions of Final Fantasy. They did the same thing to Europe, too. They made an easy version. They have a different numbering system than even we do. No, of Final Fantasy. Yeah. yeah, you're getting that. Um, so then Final Fantasy VI was the next one to come out here in North America. And so then it was thus monikered as Final Fantasy III. We're, so we're, we're missing a few of them. Yeah, so we missed out on 2, 3, and 5. Did they eventually release they did. Three was the last one released mm-hmm. uh, in North America. And I believe it came to like the DS or the 3DS. Mm-hmm. And that was like recently. Like that was within like 10 years or maybe even 15 at most. <laughs> We're talking about the 80s now. To 10 years yeah, ago. Exactly. Yeah, you're talking about like 1990 to like 2005 at the earliest. But I think it was like too close to 2010. Jesus. Which is crazy. So Final Fantasy 3 I've never played before. Uh, Final Fantasy... Um, Two and five came out again, or not again, for the first time in North America mm-hmm. on the PS One. Okay. So, which is a console that we had seven, eight, and nine on. They did like these collections. They have Final Fantasy Origins, which is Final Fantasy One and Two mm-hmm. put together. So we got one that was already released, one that was never released, mm-hmm. and then they did Final Fantasy Anthology, which is like five and six, mm-hmm. and then they did Final Fantasy Chronicles. Which was like six, or no, it was, yeah, it was the other one was four and five. Mm-hmm. They skipped three, and then the other one was like six in like Chrono Trigger. <laughs> those were even packaged really weird, like, and I'm sure I, I like probably mixed those up, but I've got them on the shelf over there. It's in the shelf, yeah. 
yonder. You know, you guys know this show. Yeah, the show. <laughs> you know you. the show. Right behind you. Uh, and then when we got to Final Fantasy VII, which was huge here, um, that's when they started... Just releasing them as they did. As they did. And then when we started getting like those packaged PS1 uh, versions that I was telling you about, mm-hmm. uh, they were renumbered. Properly. So, yeah. So Final Fantasy two here mm-hmm. be- became Final Fantasy 4 which is what it actually was and like Final Fantasy 3 here mm-hmm. became Final Fantasy 6 which is what it actually was so they ended up fixing the number and the reason they did this is so it wouldn't be confusing by the way <laughs> like that was yeah that was like that was the whole reasoning behind it is it's like well we don't want to release Final Fantasy 1 and mm-hmm. then confuse people and be like oh here's Final Fantasy 4 yeah because people ask what well, what happened to 2 and 3 mm-hmm. and they had no plans on releasing them here and they were already out anyway so mm-hmm. it was like, you know, why would we kind of Yeah, exactly. Thing. But then the industry changed, and then Final Fantasy became insanely popular, so then they started releasing them here <laughs> way later. I like how they weren't going to release them 2, 3, and 5 here, which is insane to think about. Yeah, it just wasn't... You gotta think, too, it's like, uh, back in the day, there was oftentimes, especially in, like, the 80s and 90s, where the uh, publishers could only produce X amount of cartridges per year. True. So... You didn't want to, like, exceed your quota mm-hmm. at the beginning of the year and then not be able to put out any games at all for the back half of the year, like, True. financially. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure that there was some kind of math laid out where it's like, well, we're probably guaranteed X amount of sales here, mm-hmm. and then that's going to waste X amount of cartridges that mm-hmm. we could otherwise use to put out another game. True. When we know for sure we're going to get way more sales in Japan, and then mm-hmm. we can put the, you know, the set aside cartridges for that here yeah that makes sense like they're like dividing up cartridges and titles pretty much so Mm -hmm. they can make their like yearly quota but still maximize profit that was a big thing like they don't really do that now no not nowadays obviously how many people are freaking putting out games and shit well and that was a a direct uh like reaction to the video game crash because the game was the games were so flooded that uh Companies were manufacturing more cartridges than there were consoles. <laughs> so it's like, say, I'm just throwing out a number here. Say there was 10,000 copies, or uh, Atari consoles, mm-hmm. 2600s out in the wild. Mm-hmm. They would do like 25,000 copies of E.T., which is what caused the video game crash. <laughs> I like how E.T. caused it to crash. It was, it did. <laughs> <laughs> There's a famous, like, documentary about it, too, where they dug up, they found the landfill, and they dug up. Because what they ended up doing is they, it crashed the entire market, Mm -hmm. and uh, video games plummeted in price. They were worth nothing. Mm -hmm. And nobody could blame them. No one wanted to blame them. It was a crappy game anyways. And so, they need the, they had more money in warehouse space than the Mm -hmm. cartridges were worth. (laughs) So, to free up warehouse space, they ended up dumping them in a landfill. That's hilarious. Yeah, and then the whole the vegan dairy ET. Yeah. And aren't they worth a ridiculous amount of money now because of that stupid story? If you get a hold of it, yeah. That's so just because it's like video game history now. Like, yeah. Which is kind of funny. Not because it's a good game. But yes, no, they yeah. have one in like TAC and they, because they buried so many of them that <laughs> it is hard to find one, which is funny. Like, and like now, now we don't really have to worry about that as much, but when we were growing up, like, and playing games, mm-hmm. that was still kind of a, a, very a rule. rule. Of something that they, the companies had to follow and be aware of, because mm-hmm. they didn't want the, the market to fall out again, like it had 10, 15 years prior. Yeah. In the early 80s and late trying 70s. Trying to make it a, you know, a, a thing, video games and everything. Yeah, a viable like, industry again. Mm-hmm. It was like, round two, fight, can we save it? <laughs> <laughs> like, Whoopsie. We don't know. At but least... yeah, the numbering system was really crazy with Final Fantasy. They didn't want to confuse, like, U.S. consumers, mm-hmm. uh, and then they ended up confusing all Everybody. consumers. Yeah, and they're like, wait, what Because one they course-corrected way later, and then there was different versions. We got, like, Final Fantasy... Uh, Mystic Quest, <laughs> and uh, Europe had a similar situation where it was like they just got this dumbed down, easy Final mm-hmm. Fantasy game that's like not canon to anything <laughs> that people don't talk about we or don't talk play. About. I've, I have Mystic Quest and I played it, and it's like it, Ollie would be bored. Oh, it's like you press a button and you can't die. Like it's it, it, it's really dumbed down. Wow, that's, it's it's pretty bad. That's bad. Thanks, Japan. 
We're not that stupid. But then we got into the the kind of the golden era of Final Fantasy uh, with the PS1. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's when we saw U.S. and Japanese releases just within like a, a year or several months of one another. Yeah. So that's where we get Final Fantasy seven, VII, eight, VII, and nine, mm-hmm. which are my personal favorites. Like that I that like, generation of Final I like Fantasies. Final Fantasy eight. Eight was good. Yeah, it was good. And ten and ten two were my favorite so far. Well, ten. I haven't seen ten two. I've seen ten as my ten two is more of ten. So I think you'll like that one as well. Yeah, and I really like ten. Like I loved eight, but ten's like ten's great. Ten, ten. holds up. We're playing it again after all these years. I played that one when it first came out mm-hmm. on the PlayStation two, and yeah, that one like artistically is still beautiful mm-hmm. somehow, even though it's like PS two era. Uh, gameplay is solid. Story's great. Story is great. Um, there's like some issues with like the voice acting and animation. Yeah, because that the, was the first the, Final Fantasy the, that the did lips that. move and the voices don't match. The they lips. don't. Yeah, I mean, you can't really match the lips to the the voice <laughs> at the time. So, so that can be a little easy. jarring going back and playing it. But when otherwise, they, when they talk, unless it's like a big like scene where she's dancing or something, I just don't pay attention to them talking. I look at other things in the scene. So I'm not irritated by the fact, why are your lips not matching? They don't think, no. It's horrible. Yeah, so 7 was definitely very groundbreaking, and the first one I played. Of course, yeah. Um, 7 is good. I haven't seen you play 7 too much. 7 is good. I've been streaming that one on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. Trying to go for that platinum. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, because I played that one probably the most. Yeah, you do. Uh, Final Fantasy VIII, I got to the very end of that oh, one no. when <laughs> I initially crashed. played it. It didn't crash, but um, I I didn't realize that it used like all of your party members in the final battle, mm-hmm. and I only like souped up like three of them mm-hmm. or four of them, and so that or you know it was three, three of them, and it, it like randomizes who and i couldn't i didn't know you could leave because this is like early early internet so it's mm-hmm. like you couldn't really like talk to anybody or look up a guide or something yeah on those lines. and yeah i i was at the last boss and i just never did so <laughs> which was a, a point of contention for me so that's why i went back when they did the remaster for eight and finally played through the entire thing i did all of the crazy side quests in it all the extras build up everybody in the built up and maxed out everybody which I found out later is, like, in that game in particular, the way it levels up your mm-hmm. characters is unnecessary. You actually don't need to do that. No, you, you just need just to keep them at a certain level cap, mm-hmm. and you're fine. Well, that, and you can They kill. just need to be all about the same level. Don't have anybody that's super low and then really high. Yeah. Because it the, scales to the highest level. But the funny part is, uh, for the final boss battle, it's like, you get somebody, you just kill them. Purposely. Which is what I did. I and had my stock them. three, and so I purposefully killed <laughs> the one I didn't want to use, so I had the good ones that mm-hmm. I had I been you using. You had to kill last. two of them. Yeah, like... To cycle through and get the one you wanted. And I got the one I wanted, and then I was like, oh, okay, now I can do it, and then nobody died. Yeah. So it was like, <laughs> but I could not have pulled that off with the build I had <laughs> when I was a kid. No, it, which is funny, and then you did the secret boss, which you didn't have to do, but it was so cool to do. That was a fun one to do. That was one of the hardest, like, secret mm. bosses that I've done, because I did the ones in 7 and 9 when I was a kid. Yeah. I didn't do the one in 8. There's two of them. One is ridiculously hard. One is, like, the like the third mm-hmm. strongest, like, in the game. Like, with, yeah. the, with the last boss. It is. And, uh, so... I remember doing the third hardest one, getting to the end mm-hmm. boss, but not doing the crazy hard one. True. So you think those bosses, like you're saying, were difficult because you didn't realize it, like, rotated through your, your scaling of, uh, of, uh, people where it's, like, you know, the lower, the higher. Oh, you didn't play yeah, I found out, like, as an adult, especially playing through Final Fantasy Remaster... Um, that it scaled that way. So it was like, I didn't have, I guess, intimate knowledge that it did that. Because <laughs> the other more traditional RPGs, like 7 and 9, right around it, didn't do that. Yeah. Like, scaling wasn't, like, really a thing. Like, the levels didn't matter. Why can't we still mark the rules? I don't know. Like, the level really didn't matter so much in 8. I found out mm-hmm. that there's, like, people who do, like, low-level runs. Yeah. Because it's, like... 
this just as to just you. as difficult as w- how I ended up getting the platinum trophy mm-hmm. for it was getting all my characters to level one hundred. Mm-hmm. That made everything it was else more of a pride thing for you. It was, yeah. <laughs> I wanted to be able to like. I spent the time. I maxed out all my characters. I got all of their best mm-hmm. weapons. I got all the best items. I got all the best cards in the game. Yeah, like, and then. Uh, take on the hardest. So mad at the card games. It was so funny. Oh, it's so frustrating because I used to be really good at them when I was a kid. Like, uh-huh. I like the one in. Uh, there's one in nine too. Uh-huh. I'd get the ass at it. And like <laughs> and I just like could not wrap my head around it, and then I finally got it. But yeah. <laughs> now I was playing, you know, because that's like how you get the best items in the game, and then mm-hmm. how to farm for other items mm-hmm. to get like some of the best weapons. Is you have to play the card games. Well, yeah, exactly. Which is a part of the game, so. And I like the story, too. That was a really good story in Final Fantasy VIII. Like, the whole sorceress and how, like, sacrificing her powers and stuff. Or kind of alludes to the end where he dies, the main character dies. The squall, yeah. Squall, but he really doesn't. But he does. But does he? Is he? No. They show him at the end. There's, like, a stinger, which is weird. Like, yeah, after where the she's credits. yelling at him because he did something, of course. Yeah. Squall did something. I always really liked that story because it was just so much different from mm-hmm. what 7 and 9 did. Mm-hmm. And even 10. Where it was, like, it was a little more hard sci-fi. Like, 7 yeah. kind of had, like, an environmental kind of bent to it, but it was yeah. pretty straightforward. Ten's a love story. Uh, an nine, insane love story. What? An insane love story. Yeah. Um, nine is more... Mm-hmm. M- more like a personal struggle. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't really find out to the end, but it's like you have personal character struggles. Yeah. Like, to, that they're focused through. on. Some are more, like, political or familial. Oh, Other ones are, like, more. you know, you don't know where you came from mm-hmm. kind of a thing. But they were, they're, like, common kind of tropes. Eight was good in in the sense that it, it was, like, a hard sci-fi mm-hmm. story. It also had a love story in it. But it also threw in some kind of, like, deep level, like, kind of fantasy yeah. into it as well. So it was a good, like, just kind of mishmash mm-hmm. of, like, a whole bunch of different things. But I really like that one. That was one of my favorites. Well, yeah, because I, uh... <clears throat> Eight is a really good one. I like it too. I mean, like I said, I've seen me sprinkle in seven every now and then. Um, ten, I really enjoy so far. Like we're we're about halfway through the game, aren't we? Uh, probably about a third of the way. But still, I yeah. really love the story between Titus and uh, them and all. Yeah, I like how he like narrates too because it's after the fact. Yeah, because so. yeah, he's dead. You know. <laughs> yeah. Oh no! Spoiler, spoiler alert! Yeah, from two thousand one, <laughs> twenty years ago almost. On Parnassus. Um, but still, it, it's just just an inter- entertaining to see how they fucked up all the numbering systems and then they quote unquote fixed it, but it's still fucked up. Well, and I'm honestly really surprised that we got a remaster of Final Seven. Fantasy VIII. Oh, eight. Yeah. Because they lost the coding. Oh, that's right. They had to, like, re-engineer that shit, didn't they? Like, go all the way fucking back and recode the entire game just so they can bring 8, remaster 8. I, I don't know how they did it, whether it was that or not, but regardless, they there was some finagling there. Because mm-hmm. back in the day, it was kind of a common thing where they would archive a lot of the source code for these games. Yeah. You can't just pull the code off the disc. It's not the same. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, they, 8 was one of those kind of games where mm. they lost the source code for it. So they didn't have... How do you lose that? Like, Well, imagine a company that's been around now for four years, and you have archive, and you put out, you know, back in the day, you know, 100 games a year, mm-hmm. 50 games a year, 30 games a year. Some of them seen them out, and they were quicker to produce. True. Because, like, Final Fantasy, like, 1 was 87, Final Fantasy 2 was 88. Yeah. Like, they were, like, back-to-back, and that was pretty common for a long time. Mm-hmm. So, I think it's just, like, there's so much information, if it's not properly curated or, like, archived, mm-hmm. it's just, you're like, well, we don't know where this is. And it's like, <laughs> well, Bob's been down in archives for the last 25 years. Bob's been dead for five months, and none of us knew. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know where the Final Fantasy VIII source code is, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's kind of what it comes down to, is, like, they, is they just couldn't find it. Which is a, it's been a common issue as the video game industry has gotten older, Mm-hmm. Uh, going back to these old games that people want to really, play a game yeah. or they want to release them a game for like younger gamers to be able to mm-hmm. appreciate and play. They just can't find the source code <laughs> for it. So I was Who just... thought that would be a problem? <laughs> yeah. Well, and then also the curation of video games and like uh, museums and stuff now mm-hmm. has been something... There's some games, especially within the last two generations, mm-hmm. where they're online only. You True. can never go back and play them. 
Oh, yeah. That's so it's just true. kind of lost in history and time. Isn't there, what game is it that there's so Quake? They're the old original Quakes. There's someone literally yeah. paying for a server to play online still. Yeah, Quake 3 Arena, you can play on the Sega Dreamcast still, <laughs> which was one of the first times that you could just hook up online. In the infancy of the internet, really. Yep. And, so and yeah, somebody still pays for, for private servers and to have matches and stuff. And people do. People play religiously on... Dude, can you imagine? That would be fucking hilarious. I really want to do that. Yeah. I really, I'm sure I would get just, like, owned, owned. because they've been right. playing for 20 years. But uh, I played a ton like, of Quake, meat, you know? Quake 3 Arena <laughs> back in the day and loved it. So They'd probably be like, fresh meat. Wasn't it? We watched that, too. This is a side note as well. Uh, on Quake, where they're like, uh, they challenged one guy to make a... Uh, oh, a the, level in like 10 minutes or something it was some obscenely like ridiculously small time and it was for like, that time and, and it was like level. super popular yeah and it's like the most popular one i remember like, playing that map <laughs> yeah. i didn't know that story because again it was the infancy of the internet yep, so you yep. didn't know the inner workings a lot of these studios and teams and creators mm -hmm. and stuff i just remember i liked quake like i liked yep. doom i liked wolfenstein i liked quake uh, and i played them when i was mm -hmm. a kid on old school PC with like Windows 95 on yep. it and uh, I remember that map and it's just hilarious though it's uh, that's why because I always just played with bots I didn't play that one online but. yeah fair enough but if you have to think about it too it's kind of like along, along the lines where Japan are like right fuck it we're not releasing two three or some of five over to the Americans they're they're stupid they won't get it and they're like oh well actually we're kind of popular over there oh yeah you know and now we can produce more and now yeah. we can re-release them now we can remake them which uh, I thought it was I mean, funny. even recently, like, <laughs> Hideo Kojima said that Americans were dumb. Yep. Like, and it, it was like, you know when what, he was Hideo? doing Death Stranding. You know what, Hideo Kojima? Shut up. <laughs> it was just funny. Make your movie video games. I don't want to talk about your shit. You know, that's what everybody's going to say. Just make movies. Package delivery. Even though everyone really liked Death Stranding. Package delivery, asshole. I'm it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sorry, I, I want to play that game. Boop. I'm still going to tease you about it. You have your head in my pits. Um, but no, what's funny is what, like, Final Fantasy is... Not me, by the way, the cat. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot about the visual aspect. <laughs> so I'm looking at the cat right now. <laughs> Whoops. Um, anyways. <laughs> How to get Anthony show on podcast. <laughs> Check. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, anyways, I mean, we're married. Me, I was like, we're gonna get in trouble. Um, no, um... Providing context. <laughs> Providing cat text. Meow. Um, for Final Fantasy is how our younger generation, even our son's not going to know that they fucked it up with the numbers. Oh, no, have. yeah, because now it's all fixed. Like, he'd have to play, like, Quote the unquote, originals, fixed. you know, yeah. to notice No, he'd literally have to go through, like, dad's quote-unquote archive games. And oh, like yeah, yeah, he'd, he'd like, have to go through, like, it, my NES like, collection. Yeah, and he's playing, and he's it. like, wait a minute, this isn't, you know, Final Fantasy 2, this is Final Fantasy, like, 4. 4, or, yeah. And then, which is, well, yeah, which is, and he'd have to know, and, yeah. Well, I'm not saying he's not gonna know, but it's just funny, it's like, to think of, I'm like, sure he <laughs> will know because of my anecdotes, not because of, like, personal experience. No, but yeah. it's, like, funny, those one kid going down to their parents' basement, and, like, looking through their games, which are, like, what we grew up with with yeah, like NES like games ancient. and they're like blowing on it so they've like played the remaster I feel like this is the start of like Jumanji 3 <laughs> <laughs> it is but <laughs> that's how it goes <laughs> that's great still it's just funny to think of like how crazy it was and how JRPGs are just getting big again it's kind of cool to see everything being re-tossed back on like Final Fantasy and everything yeah like I I know a lot of people were very uh, like, divisive, like, with Final Fantasy, like, 13 and mm -hmm. then 15, but I really enjoyed 13 and 15. I, I wouldn't call them okay, my you favorites. Know what? I hate 15. 15 of, like, 13 and 15 is, like, the least. Where's like, 14? Least. 14's online. That's the one John plays. Oh. That's the MMO, which that one, it released and bombed. <laughs> That's Everyone it. hated it, Let's and then a year later, now. they re-released it as a Realm Reborn, and they even worked the flop into the story. Mm, 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 mm. Like, the world was re actually reborn. That's funny. Because of some, like, cataclysmic, like, event. <laughs> and so that's why everything prior was, like, wiped, and then it was new again, like oh, a phoenix. Final Fantasy. Yeah, and that you. one is, like, the second most popular how MMO we, now. How we love you when you fuck up and how you fix things. Yeah, it's still, like, World of Warcraft, and then, like, Final Fantasy XIV is number two. Oh, that's insane. Which is but crazy. The, it's done really well. 
Uh, he's 15. I hate the character. He's underdeveloped. Oh, Noctis? Noctis. Yeah. He disappears for 10 fucking years and there's no backstory to that shit. No. We wake up in a cave. DLC's kind of No explanation too, very short. of why he wakes up in a cave. Where yeah. the fuck he went. Killing the one big final boss was a joke. That was a joke. Because, like, you just like, use your one power absorbent ring and just stand at a distance so you wouldn't die and just suck them dry until, like, he get to a certain degree and just exploded and disappeared. Yeah. Like, Which well, is, like, the show that he was, like, about... super powerful, but then, it, like, from a gameplay perspective. Like, big like, fucking uh, loophole there. It's like, I'm saying Especially on... after playing Final Fantasy VIII, where, like, the last boss was still challenging the way I played, and then the mm-hmm. extra boss that was, was insanely difficult was really hard. I actually died twice. Like, you had to do, like, everything to build up to it. And then I had to tweak the items I had and how I mm-hmm. played and approached that battle to be able to defeat... Uh, the weapon, but exactly, but it's still it's just, in fifteen. It was like, yeah, done. And and now when I did the hardest boss in fifteen as well, and they said Super before easy. that game came out that it would be like you you'd be playing for like three hours or something. You played like ten minutes, and I didn't get hit once. And it was just like boop done first try. And I went and I did not have high level characters. No, you didn't. Even, you didn't even do all the side quests or anything like that. Like you just like we blitzed through because it, it was intriguing. Don't get me wrong. But I feel the like world was intriguing. The world was intriguing. Like, the I characters the, weren't. We're not. The world was intriguing. I feel like with the Noctis thing, it's a fucking, what is that movie? The, the uh, Mad Max, the newest Mad Max again. Where we did you just circled around, movie. which is what they did. Yeah, everything in the in-between time was just kind of superfluous. Like, it didn't really matter. Yeah, it's like yeah. we literally just fucking recircled and went back to the original, the start. Yeah, it was like, like, you could have just hung out there or nearby. That's what I mean. Yeah. It's like, I get why his dad told him to leave, but at the same time, it's like... Yeah, I mean, that one definitely is lackluster in some degrees. I like 13 better, and the, and the trilogy as a whole better. Yeah. Which I that one gets a lot of shit, too. But. I find it funny how it's Final Fantasy, and then they have, like, sequels within the Final Fantasy, like 10 and 10 2, and, like, stuff like that. Yeah, and 10 and like... 10 2 is the first time that the franchise ever did that, and mm-hmm. it was kind of a shock. Uh, 10 because, 2... like, Final Fantasy is supposed to be Final Fantasy, even though they really don't have anything to do, relate with each other. <laughs> no, they just have, like, uh, common names is a big one that's, mm-hmm. like, handed down between Final Fantasies, and like Sid, and stuff like uh, that. Biggs and Wedge, mm-hmm. or other character names. Um, <clears throat> Music-wise, mm-hmm. usually, like, you know, like, battle music and stuff will be, like, handed Chocobos, down. I think, like, Chocobos, the only common thing Mogs, in this session. Or Chocobos! Um... Yeah, I mean, they share, like, motifs and stuff, but yeah, none of them are really, like, direct sequels to mm-hmm. one another at all. Sometimes they'll, like, later they'll retcon in things mm-hmm. within the series. So, during the PS1 era of Final Fantasy, they had 7, 8, 9, of course, mm-hmm. but they also did one called Final Fantasy Tactics, mm-hmm. which was not an RPG, but it was a strategy game. Yeah. Uh, which is, like... I, I It is just the best strategy game yeah. on a console. Yeah. Like, it just is. And that's a genre that has never really gotten legs in the console space. Like, you get one every once in a while. But, yeah. Um, that one still holds up the test of time. Still a great game. Mm-hmm. Um, they ended up tying that one into Final Fantasy Twelve way later. Oh, okay. I see how they did that. Uh, where it was the same world as uh, Evil Is. Mm-hmm. I-V-A-L-I-C-E. Evil Is. I think that's how you Said that five it. times. Uh, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so... They tied tactics and Final Fantasy XII together as if they were the same mm-hmm. uh, world, but they were, like, thousands of years apart. Yeah. Like, story-wise. And then they did the same thing. It was retconned in, like, uh, interviews and, like, via, like, creators mm-hmm. that 7 and 10 were related. Mm-hmm. And that they were, like, eons apart as well. But yeah. It, but it was technically the same world. That 10 is a prequel to 7 in some ways. Hmm. So, but again, it's it's retconned in like a comic book. It's not. It, it wasn't designed that yeah, way. Yeah, they so. weren't specifically designed that way. They just thought like, well, this is actually a pretty idea, a good idea. They're kind and of and seven and ten are probably the most popular related. Yeah, so like, oh, well, guess what? They're they're actually all they're popular. related. Yeah. yeah, and tactics is super popular, and, mm-hmm. and twelve uh, did really well for itself as you know mm-hmm. as, as a standalone. Um, <laughs> but. Yeah, it's it is interesting, like what they've done in recent years with Final Fantasy. Because I agree, fifteen was it just a bit. Eh. The story, like the fucking gameplay, was like just intense and amazing. Gameplay like, was cool, it. world was cool. The lore that they were trying to build was awesome. Yeah, I, was, I stood behind that. But yeah, the character development and the characters themselves, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the 
the the first and foremost like narrative in front of your face mm-hmm. as you're playing was just it was lackluster. It very really it really was. Yeah. Like it's just like okay. So I'm curious to see what they're gonna do with Final Fantasy sixteen. I am. So like I said to you earlier, it's like I hope that with Final Fantasy seven and its episodic release, aka the C D release, that you know, they toss sixteen in there somewhere or make it to where it can be tossed in there and they're not just throwing out episode one, two, and three uh, with Final Fantasy seven and just kind of pushing sixteen farther out. Yeah. Well, it'll be. I'm curious to see like how well Final Fantasy VII Remake does, and if they'll maybe consider doing a similar treatment to like Final Fantasy VIII or Nine. That'd be cool. Maybe even ten. Just how popular they are. Ten probably. Eight or nine are popular, but ten and like seven are the most popular, I think. Yeah, ten it holds up and it's done really well, and that's mm-hmm. one of the reasons they remastered that first. Yeah. Because now we have all of them re-released and remastered for mm-hmm. the PS4. You can get Final Fantasy. 7, 8, 9, 10, 10, 2, mm-hmm. and 12. Yeah. That have all been released, either digitally or even physically, in the case of, like, 10 and 10, 2 and 12, uh, on current generation, like, hardware and tech, which is cool. That is cool, and I like how they're bringing it back. Like, how it, how it started out <laughs> with, you know, uh-oh, you know, this is the end, and to, like, oh, well, guess what? That's not the end. Yeah, no, I think it's awesome. Like, and I think twelve doesn't get a lot of love. Twelve's a great one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Final Fantasy twelve, the Zodiac Age is the remaster for that. A mm-hmm. uh, very political story, which is kind of cool. Yeah, a lot it's of different. Cool. The though main character for twelve though is the worst, way worse than Noctis. Why? Vaughn. Vaughn's yeah. awful. Well, I mean, like how I mean, Noctis just didn't grow as a character. What's wrong with Vaughn? Vaughn's not even a character. Like, <laughs> there's like he's just very, he's just very bland, mm-hmm. very like. In the very beginning of Final Fantasy twelve, his uh, you play as his older brother, and it's like this kingdom is being like besieged and like taken over. Mm-hmm. Uh, his brother was one of the guards or soldiers there, stationed there, and uh, he's killed. Mm-hmm. So then they flash to like the younger brother, and it's uh, after the the rival kingdom is now occupying the kingdom yeah. they were taking over. So you think it was like I thought, and when I first played it, it was gonna be a revenge tale. Mm-hmm. Like I am going to rise up to the occasion like i was too young at the time but i'm gonna like get older i'm gonna be stronger mm-hmm. like i am going to uh, Kill. avenge my like brother's death yeah like that but it's like no i want to be a sky pirate yay and then he's just like super bland doesn't really add much to oh, like, any any kind pirate. of conversation yeah, <laughs> um he's just there along for the ride and then they have such amazing other strong characters that have a lot more um I don't know, a lot more they reason to do what they're doing, and, and, and they do develop, mm-hmm. and that could easily have been the lead. Growth and stuff, yeah. I feel like with uh, Final Fantasy XV, uh, the blonde, oh crap. Prompto? Prompto could have been easily just, like, the main character. I would have been fine, like, kind of a goofy, like... King, like... Uh, I'd be totally down with that. Yeah, like, Final Fantasy XV should have been a bit off Prompto. I would have been fine with that. <laughs> he had a way more interesting backstory, which was, like, explored just a little bit in the DLC, where you find out that he was, like... A clone. And he was a part of, like, the invading force that mm-hmm. actually had been dead for a long time yep. to the Kingdom of Insomnia. And mm-hmm. it was, like, I found his backstory way more intriguing yeah, yeah. than Prince Noctis's. But... Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh well. Even even Ignis and uh, Gladio like had better had better stories and growth too. And like Noctis, Ignis gets fucking blinded. Gladio goes crazy. off to try to get like stronger, gets like his face cut up. Like well, they all try. Yeah, Noctis was a dick in that, especially when Ignis went blind. Yeah, he's just like oblivious to it almost. Yeah. Like he just doesn't care. Yeah. Doesn't like show really any empathy. Nope. Right. Or even when his uh, potential wife dies too. Yeah, he's he just kind of like him. Yeah. Even or though they're supposed to. Which is weird, because in a video game, you think you could write chemistry. Mm-hmm. It'd be harder for, like, actors who don't have chemistry to they portray have chemistry at all. Uh, as if they have chemistry on screen. But you think with a video game character, it's like, Easy. oh, we can make that work a little bit easier, because it's a video game. It's virtual. But mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, they have absolutely no chemistry in that writing at all. They no. try to force it. <laughs> with a dog, like, they send back and forth. How but, do you fuck that up? I know. I especially think... I, in my opinion, like, a good story usually has a love story in it. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, you get to see Squall and Renoa, for example, in yep. 8, and how that grows and changes. Mm-hmm. And then, I think it's even more prevalent and more touching in, in 10 with Arcane Yuna Titus and, and Titus. Mm-hmm. Like, but 15 tried to make that happen, but a lot of the side characters were, like, forgettable, too, and I didn't really know their motives or care. Yeah. And she exactly. was one of them. Yeah. 
So I was like, oh, okay. Like, you're just going to sacrifice yourself after all this time when you could have done this like 10 years ago. <laughs> exactly. Whatever. That's cool. That's cool. I mean, whatever fits the story. Well, I mean, I think uh, we're kind of running out of gas on the Final Fantasy. As they do in Final Fantasy XV. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the only thing I would like bring up to kind of close it off is like, what would you want from a Final Fantasy XVI? Like, all that cards is... on the table. Like, you could maybe cherry pick from all these examples that we brought up from, you know, Milsey 7 okay, on. So, Final Fantasy 16, mine is more chocobos. More chocobos. Uh, the card game, which is legit. The inclusion of a card game would be cool. That would be cool. Bring that back. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the card game was really cool. Would you want um, a more fantasy, like, 9 and mm. even 10 a little bit? Or would you want more like sci fi? Like, sci fi. I don't like want to see. Seven and eight. One more I, I'm thinking fiction. more like a mix up between eight and ten. Eight and, okay, yeah. Ten has some sci fi elements in it. That's what I mean. It's yeah. like some sci fi elements. Obviously, Cubis is dead and stuff like that. Well, they have the whole afterlife bit and stuff. Yeah, afterlife but, bit. And... But it is very like colorful and like kind of fantasy. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, they yeah. still have machines and shit. Machines, yeah. Kind of like more like ten. Ten, I think. Okay. And so I'm a blend of the two. A blend of the two. And I want the fucking main characters to grow and to, like, Yeah, you know, I want a strong character, like, main character for sure. Like, right. 10 needs I don't even be... care kind of which way you take it. Like, he doesn't have to be, like, stoic like no. Squall was. No. He doesn't have to be, like, happy-go-lucky like, like Zidane or Titus. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to be, you know, deeply conflicted like Cloud is mm -hmm. in 7 or even more, like, politicized in 12 with some mm -hmm. of the other side characters, but... I, want I don't want. I don't need. I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't, is I don't need a specific archetype, but I, I need that. I need. Yeah. I need a good, strong character. Where I'm like, like, yeah, that's my dude. Like, like that's Pronto awesome. or you know, Ignis or something. Not Noctis. So like the most recent ones I can think of. You know. Oh yeah, because I. I don't think after Tedis, there I was kind of yeah. like, yeah. Noctis should just. Have lightning was character. the only one in the in between time where I was like, that's a cool character. Yeah, lightning was a good blend. Something like lightning, Prompto. <laughs> but then she really yeah. wasn't in ten two. I know. Or thirteen two. I mean, sorry. Thirteen. I was like, wait, not ten two, wrong one. Or even uh, Luna's Luna's growth was like you see her growth too. Oh yeah, and that's why she's the lead in ten two. Ten two. Yeah. Yeah. What What do you have? What do you What do you think? I, I would like him to actually go more, like, fantasy kind of route. Okay. I feel like we've gotten a lot of science fiction okay, elements in Final Fantasy. Mm -hmm. Seven's very kind of sci-fi heavy. Uh, eight's kind of sci-fi heavy. Mm -hmm. Ten's a good blend. Twelve, more politicized, but more kind of fantasy. Yeah. Um, and then thirteen mm -hmm. tried to be a blend as well, but it was more science fiction-y as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Fifteen was more fantasy. Yeah. But I want I want a fantasy that's uh, like setting that's more like nine. Mm -hmm. I found that kind of whimsical, like nine yeah. in particular. Mm -hmm. Like it was colorful, and there was all these like wonderful like cities and stuff that were very much like kind of old and mm -hmm. look and style. And then they had like airships and stuff that yeah. were like either you know. Uh, they were like mist powered, like they had mist <laughs> engines, you know. And it's like they included like fantasy kind of jargon mm -hmm. to like fit the world, and then they built the technology off of that. And yeah, uh, chocobos and mogs were like heavily prevalent mm -hmm. in that. Well, you, you it was more naturalistic too, but the cities were cool. Chocobo in a Final Fantasy game and in a Final Fantasy game. I'm sorry. Nowadays, pretty much. Uh, the card game one's a good one. I wish they would bring back... Final Fantasy was kind of known for having mini games in it. Mm -hmm. There's like a snowboarding mini game in Final Fantasy VII. Okay. That was fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. It was super cool. Uh, Not the, necessarily a card game. You just want a mini game. Yeah, the card games, I, I think, hit the best for me, mm -hmm. though. Because, like, I remember really enjoying the card games in eight, and it tied to the Chocobo side quest. Yeah. Um, and then... Nine also had a great card game that was like different. So mm -hmm. those two were back to back. That was awesome. They have, really haven't done that since those two. No, not at all. And then, like I said earlier, I don't care what kind of archetype the, the main character fits. I just want somebody who's a badass and I can root for. Yep, true. I agree. Like, with that one. I want someone like Lightning. I want somebody like Cloud. I want somebody like Tidus. Like mm -hmm. I want. I want to kick ass. And even from 12, somebody like, you know, Balthier or Fron, like, mm -hmm. I want something like that where you're like, yeah, that, that's that's my guy or that's my gal. Like, they're going to go kick ass. Exactly. Like, and they have a distinct goal in mind. Mm -hmm. and they may change along the way depending on the information that they find out. So hopefully exactly. there's character growth there. But 
I don't, I don't particularly care if they're like specifically like stoic or happy go lucky. I don't care about that. It's no, just you like, want to oh, I want to root for him. Be a badass. Like, mm -hmm. be you, but you know, grow as you do it by the end of the game. Because it should be a momentous story in that world. It's That's what you should be playing. Is momentous occasion. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and so I think that would be like the most mm -hmm. interesting. I'm trying to think if there's any like maybe gameplay kind of stuff. I wouldn't mind if they went back to like turn based. I like turn based RPGs. That's not bad, yeah. I feel like 15 was really trying hard to be an action RPG. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really was. Which was successful in its own right. I'm not saying the end. Seven, I like the idea. The seven remake, I like the idea of being you being the switch yeah. between the two. You can do more classic like turn based combat, mm -hmm. but if you want high octane kind of action, you can go to you can RPG you can play it classic. as an action RPG too. Mm -hmm. And I think if that's as revolutionary as I think it's gonna be, I hope they include that kind of system in Final Fantasy sixteen. Yeah, I hope seven remake in a positive way Boosted, in influences yeah. sixteen. So I think gameplay wise that would be really cool. They really could cool. figure out how to do both. Mm -hmm. It's kinda like <clears throat> I haven't played it, but I've read that Dragon Age eleven, you can play it as like a more modern three mm -hmm. D JRPG, like how they're more constructed nowadays. Yeah. Or you can play it like with sprites turn based. Mm -hmm. Which would be cool. As if it you were playing, you know, Dragon Warrior on the NES, but mm -hmm. in, you know, twenty twenty. <laughs> and, you, and there's like pretty much two different games in one package, but it's the same story and the Which same characters. Cool. Like, I think these kind of hybrids to bridge the old with the new, and you, and you get to pick, mm -hmm. I think would be the best way for Final Fantasy 16 to go. I think so, too. That'd be a good good factor in there. Yeah. All right. I think that's what I would want, though. Definitely. It's not, I mean, either one sounds awesome, so. Yeah. Okay, well, anything else to add before we wrap up the Queens of Fingers piece? No, I think we kind of hit all bases there. We did housekeeping at the top of the episode, so... <laughs> no housekeeping today! <laughs> no, not at the end, at least. No, we kind of, like, all squared that away in the beginning, but I feel like, you know, Final Fantasy is definitely not done. <laughs> I don't know. Ever. It's still their flagship. Yep. Yeah, they do a lot of other huge, like, franchises now. But yeah. Yeah, Final Fantasy is definitely... Definitely. Not know. the Final Fantasy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> and is, you know, it's still a juggernaut. Oh, yeah, definitely it is. Yeah, I think All that's right, it. that's it. Well, my name's Ariel Schultz. My name's Anthony Schultz. As always. On the bear. <laughs> Have a good night, guys. Bye. Peace. Hey there, guys. This is Anthony Schultz, one half of the duo for Rage Quit. Uh, I just wanted to spend a minute or two, at most, um, talking about Ariel and I's other endeavors or where you can follow her and I, uh, if you're a fan of this podcast. So I'm most prolific on Twitter as far as social media is concerned. Uh, I share more kind of gut reaction or like private, uh, experiences and opinions there. Uh, I'm at Anthony R. Schultz. Pretty easy to remember. Just my name. And if you'd be so inclined, you can uh, give me a follow, and I also drop Rage Quit links there every week, and other things that Ariel and I are both working on. Uh, AS Inquisitor also streams, which is the production company that produces uh, Rage Quit, essentially myself at the moment, and I stream uh, five days a week. Uh, I'm a variety streamer, so I do a little bit of everything. Uh, hopefully, uh, there's something there that you would really enjoy, even if it's just one day a week. Uh, I take every Thursday and Friday off, and you can follow and or subscribe at twitch.tv slash asinquisitor. Uh, all these links that I'm mentioning uh, will be in the description box below, and I will reiterate. Also, uh, AS Inquisitor has a... YouTube channel. So if you're not listening to this podcast uh, via YouTube, uh, if you're using your preferred podcast uh, provider, uh, this podcast does make its way to YouTube. Uh, we will eventually be uh, recording uh, not only our voices, but also ourselves when we do the podcast. We're just working on some equipment issues right now. But we also have uh, past streams that I've done for AS Inquisitor that have a little bit more kind of polish or pizzazz to them. They're divided up into like better bite-sized chunks. 
uh, for complete game uh, playthroughs or Let's Plays. There's also a lot of unique content there. Uh, I record things throughout the week as I play games, just kind of funny moments or um, maybe even like personal achievements, things of that nature. And so you can search for AS Inquisitor on YouTube. And again, the link will be in the description below. But those are my three kind of primary platforms that you can find me on. So that's Twitter, uh, YouTube, and Twitch. Uh, Ariel actually has her own YouTube channel called Painting with L.M. Schultz. Uh, she's a very talented painter. Uh, she has her fine arts degree and enjoys painting for... Uh, you know, cathartic reasons, as well as to improve on her, like, technical prowess. So she started her own YouTube channel to improve on her techniques, as well as show people uh, kind of some basics or things that you can do uh, painting-wise. There's also some other kind of uh, crafty uh, do-it-yourself kind of ideas and videos on there as well that pertain a little bit more personally to her and I, uh, because they usually involve our family. You know, it's a, a family project that she's working on. Uh, for example, she did our our son's Halloween costume. And so she walked through how she constructed and created, you know, the costume and how you could do something similar for your kiddos at home. Uh, and then finally, uh, you can follow Ariel on Twitter as well. She is primarily on Twitter, just like myself. Uh, we don't really indulge in too many other social media platforms, uh, save for maybe Instagram. Uh, I don't think we're as active on there. Ariel might be, more so than myself. Uh, but you can follow her at, at Merhobbit and give her a follow as well. That's uh, my lovely co-host and beautiful wife, Ariel. But anyways, I just wanted to stop in and kind of throw some links your way. And if you were curious about what AS Inquisitor uh, was doing and what how Rage Quick kind of fit into that ecosystem. Uh, there it is. Yeah, got all the links for you. Um, if you're interested in any one of those, uh, all of those links are going to be in the description box below, and they're going to be in every podcast episode now. So I'm not sure if they're entirely there right now, but I'm going to be doing a fresh write-up and make sure and have all of those included for you. So just click a link or copy and paste and uh, head on over if any of those strike your fancy. But anyways, uh, thanks for enjoying the show. Really appreciate it. Um, we'll be back next week for more rage quittiness. Uh, and as always, follow the bear. And have a good evening, guys.